Okay, hello everyone. My name's Mark Philpot and I'd like to welcome you to Cruising Connoisseurs. In today's episode, I'm meeting yet again another inspirational character that I've met here at Scarborough Boat Harbour and his name is Bill Hatfield. Bill, good morning. Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. It's a glorious day outside and um, we've been talking already off camera about a lot of amazing things. I've been absolutely gobsmacked by Bill's life story although i'm sure that he's only told me a fraction of it but uh already what i've heard has been incredible bill so mm. thank you for sharing that part with me but what we're doing now is we're going to talk about bill's upcoming adventure and um yesterday i had the privilege of meeting another global sailor who had been around the world in a 12-foot boat this time it's a little bit different and we're going to talk to bill about his upcoming journey around the world so, Bill, for the sake of our viewers who haven't listened to anything that we've been talking about this morning so far, can you tell us about what you're about to head off and try to attempt to do in December? Yeah, well, uh, there's a um, a uh, world sail record that's uh, up for grabs, um, and that's to sail around the world non-stop west of out. That's heading towards the west uh -huh. without stopping and unassisted. Uh -huh. um, Robin Knox Johnson has... Uh, Yep, they're making a um, they're having a, a race now, the global round the world race, in commemoration of 50 years since oh. that was done. And he was the first to do it, was he? He was the first man to do it. Right. And he did it in a 33 foot boat. Right. And uh, so um, many people have done that uh -huh. since, uh -huh. and ever so much faster. Yep. But he was the first. Mm -hmm. But that was 50 years ago. Wow. Now, some. 30 or 40 years ago, the uh, people were claiming various records. So the uh, Yachting World Yachting Federations got together and formed the World Sail Speed Record Council. Uh -huh. Now, this is sort of uh, makes rules or, or has rules of uh -huh. um, what speed is doing and is the recognised body. So I was going to go sailing, you know, just in a, in a 33 footer. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll do something. Looked up some of these records and found out that there was a Westabout record uh -huh. for under 40 feet. Uh -huh. So I said, well, I'll have a crack at that. Uh -huh. Well, So just for those people watching who are not too familiar with the way that that whole sailing process works, that means sailing, we're here in Brisbane on the east coast of Australia today. Yep. So you're going to be heading out of here and heading west around the world constantly without stopping. That's the idea. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Yep. And um, I, I, this, is, this will be my third attempt. Uh, I got as far as uh, about two-thirds of the way and uh, had some trouble two or three years ago yep. uh, in a 33-footer. Um, a right. And uh, I sold that in the Falkland Islands. I've done about maybe 18,000 of the of the more or less 28,000 miles uh -huh. and um, came back and bought this boat. Uh -huh. So I set off again um, in July last year uh -huh. and uh, that's uh, whatever it is, 14, 15 months ago yep. and uh, got as far as the Falklands, bit of rigging trouble, um, few attempts to fix it, jury rig or jerry rig or whatever, and um, decided that too many things had gone wrong, sailed back to the Falklands, got it fixed, and I sailed back here, uh -huh. left in, I don't know, when was it, April, uh -huh. got back here in September. Right. Just, it was a non-stop. Yeah. yeah. And very simple, very straightforward, and... Uh, yeah. But I still hadn't achieved what I set out to do. Right. So uh, now I'm getting the rigging redone and um, uh, maybe a new mainsail and uh, a couple of little things yeah. and uh, intend to head off in December. And away again. Yeah. Now, for the viewers out there, can you tell everyone how old you are? <laughs> oh, that's ageism, I believe. Uh, you can change the various things, but they haven't let you change your age yet. And uh, yeah, I'll be uh, 80. When you're old, you always go up a bit. I'll be 80 in January. Wow. So there you go. 
um, that's phenomenal to think that you're taking on a challenge like this at the age of 80. Now, is that another record? Is I'm that going to be oldest at the moment? I did compete in our, in our circumnavigation one stop. Right. Recognised. They're probably oldest then. Yeah. But they don't recognise. Oh, they don't. No, no. Okay. Age, age, a little bit because uh, people were getting younger and younger mm. doing these things, and mm. they sort of felt that. Oh, they do have the youngest, don't they? No, they don't. Oh, they don't. No, they, they don't recognise. They don't recognise it. Okay. No, the youngest or oldest. Oh, okay. Okay. So those those records uh, yeah. are no longer something to aim for. Yeah, right. right. And uh, you can still do it and still claim it. Yeah, and, sure. And they'll recognise the yeah that uh, you have done the uh, done done the circumnavigation. Yeah. But you cannot uh, actually claim it as, uh, as okay. an age thing. Well, just for our viewers, I'm going to say that cruising connoisseurs will unofficially recognise this as the oldest uh, attempt of going around the world. Now you've had. A couple of goes at it already. Yeah. Um, things didn't go well. You've told me True. a couple of um, the stories why. You ended up in the ocean off Cape Horn. That must have been dramatic. Well, it was very quick. <laughs> right. Uh, it sounds, in, in retrospect, sounds a bit scary. But uh, I was only in the water. I was only, you know, two or three metres away from the boat. Mm. And um, I pulled myself back on again. Mm. And um, then had a fair few things to do. So... Uh, it's just sort of part of part of sailing, right? Uh, yeah, very lucky, of course. Uh, yeah, people yeah. very lucky. Mm. People have uh, you know been washed overboard and um, mm. in not such severe circumstances and and uh, mm. gone missing. Mm. So um, yeah, lucky but uh, not scary. Just one of those things. Yeah. And, uh, now, the... sailing, I I sort of enjoy it. Mm. Um, you sort of enjoy it, yet you're going alone around the world. <laughs> yeah, well, on, yeah. On, on some occasions, um, I've just danced around the around the cockpit and around the saloon, and um, it, it's just a really, really lovely, lovely feeling. Yeah. And, of course, there's a lot of things that you don't miss. I mean, you don't miss the traffic. Mm. Um mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's my main grouch. Is, is it mm. seems so hard just to drive around yep. uh, as as you know, cities get bigger and this sort of thing. Um, you don't worry about locking up. Mm. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about what you're going to eat tonight. Yep. Uh, because uh, or, or go shopping or any of these things. Mm. So it's very very simple life. Mm. And I'm a little bit slack in in many regards. So you know I'll. Um, the solitude ever get to you? Not at all. No, no, no. no. Uh, my my favourite rowing boat is a single skull. Although I row eights and fours and pairs. And, oh. um, my favourite gliding my is a single seater gliding. Although I do fly two seaters. Right. So um, yeah, I, I'm maybe a little bit solitary that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. I enjoy my own company. Which sure. Well, that's. <laughs> It's a very important thing in what people. you're going to be doing, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't enjoy it, but yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's a very relaxing, very pleasant and um, uh, nicely time-consuming uh, pastime. Um, you know, when you retire, you, you uh, are a little bit more limited in, in the things that you do, I guess. Uh, yeah. So um, it's, it's a great way to spend a half a year or a year. Wonderful. Now, we're sitting today at the Scarborough Marina, which is, for our viewers out there, it's about 30 minutes drive northeast of um, the city of Brisbane, which is the capital city here in, in Queensland. Um, we're sitting on the boat that Bill is actually going to attempt to do this uh, trip again in. Any dramatic changes since you tried last time to the boat itself? Yes, uh, the, the rigging um, <coughs> file, which is a bit of a nuisance, uh, the uh, wires, uh, lower diagonals failed, and... Um, now I've uh, sort of uh, changed the rigging, or, or having the rigging being changed uh, to a double spreader. In other words, instead of having one cross tree uh, halfway up the mast, mm. I'm getting two, okay. which tends to make the the mast stronger, less okay. chance of failure. Yeah. And it, and is this trip um, something that's being sponsored? Have you got sponsors that are supporting you with all the gear and that for this trip? No, no, I have absolutely no sponsors. No I, sponsors at all? No, no, I've, I've never looked for them. Right. And um, I've right. just um, 
they've done it on my sort of own resources. Um, so I, I'm not bound and apparently it, you know, it takes a fair bit of effort to get sponsorship mm. from what I've mm. read of other mm. people. They can spend years doing yep. that and I'd rather be sailing. You'd rather be sailing, yeah? Yes. Okay. Then. So if there's anyone out there watching from a company today, would you be interested to hear from them if they wanted to help you out in some way? Not particularly. Not really? No. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> oh, I tried, but I tried. <laughs> there's there's uh, so, many, so many people uh, yep. uh, wanting companies to do this or that for them. Yeah. Uh, when it's actually from my own enjoyment. Yeah. And um, There's no I'm, outside pressure. Or... Yeah, mm. yeah. And I don't have to go go begging uh, or asking or what have you worried about what I can get for nothing. Mm. Um, mm. You know, most, most people you know, in my age or my era have been able to put aside, or a lot of people, put aside a little bit of money and yep. um, I'm spending none. Okay. I'm Very sure good. there's a lot of people out there who would like to know a little bit more about the boat. So what model boat is it and why did you choose this particular boat? Well, um, I uh, am a great believer in, in a fin keel and a, a rudder at the stern. And so that puts the more traditional or like typical Robin Locker Johnson's boat, which is a full keel. I feel these boats a bit faster uh -huh. and um, a, a little bit more modern. As, and they, they are still evolving uh -huh. um, rapidly. Yep. So this is a sort of, from the modern racer to... The boats of 50 years ago, it's a sort of compromise in between. Uh -huh. um, it has no water ballast, it has a fixed keel, okay. um, it has single rudder, uh -huh. and um, I, it's just a boat that sort of looks looks nice. Yep. What happened, one, one of my good friends, uh, glider friends, is a man by the name of Hank Kaufman, uh -huh. and um, Hank is a successful uh, competitive glider pilot, but he also um, built and designed yachts. Okay. And uh, I said to Hank, uh, what was his best yacht? And he said, oh, the North Shore 38. And so I thought, oh, that's good. I'm looking at one now and um, up in Cairns. And I said, will you come up with me and have a look at it? So we went up there and um, he checked it out and said, yeah, this is a good boat. That's my favourite design, so I thought that's good enough for me. And that was uh, it. Yeah. Decision was made. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. So it's a North Shore 30... 38. 38. There Oops. we are. It's a North Shore 38 we're sitting on. Nice boat. It looks very seaworthy, and um, I think I would be comfortable in going, going on this one as well. Now, when you head out into beautiful Moreton Bay here when you leave, mm -hmm. what's, the, uh, what's the track you're going to take? Oh, I'll just go down through the islands down inside the islands and um, my starting point is officially the uh, uh, Gold Coast Seaway. It's a, okay, uh, yep. It's a, uh, so that's about, what, 50 nautical miles from where we are today? Yeah, it, yeah. it's a, uh, you've got a motor most of the way yep. because of the, uh, the channel, so it's, it's a long day yeah. to go down there. Mm -hmm. I normally pull in at <laughs> my normal uh, at Southport Yacht Club, we're very welcoming, and um, yep. I leave from there. I get checked out by the customs, yeah. uh, usually in the morning, and uh, get my clearance and sail out. Yeah. And the uh, official observer yeah. is on the transit of the two lights. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. it's got to be a, a specific mm -hmm. uh, start recognised by an official. Okay, okay. And do you have a specific date you're leaving on yet? No, I haven't. You haven't, okay. No, I'm that sure. can be planned up to almost the day, can it? Or how does that work? Uh, yeah, yeah. You you have to uh, give the uh, uh, official observer uh, yep. a little bit of notice. Yeah. But uh, you have actually once you apply, I think you've got eighteen months or so. Right. Uh, to actually, or might might be longer. Yep. Uh, to actually do the start yep. once you have your route approved, uh -huh. uh, which I have already. I'm going to do the same one. Uh -huh. uh, so. Um, yeah, it's it's a, a official start and then official timing at the finish. Mm. So Christmas Day on the Big Blue this year? Oh no, no, no. no. Uh, I did uh, my very first yacht uh, trip forty years ago, forty five years ago. We actually took off on Christmas Day. Right. But uh, no, be with the family. Right. I, uh, right. 
my daughters and um, then sometime after that. Sometime after that. Mm-hmm. So you'll head south down the east coast of Australia? That's right. Yeah, yeah. I may, uh, may go, I've been round uh, south of Tasmania twice and once through Bass Strait. Uh-huh. I was a little worried at one stage about the you know, quite solid traffic in, in the Bass Strait, especially uh-huh. around uh, uh-huh. Wilson's Promontory. Uh-huh. But uh, I'll just see how, how the wind blows. Yeah, I can right. go either, either way. Yeah. My uh, points I have to go around, well, not many. I have to go around, uh, well, Cape of Good Hope. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I have to go around that and then an island in the Canary Islands. Yeah. And uh, Cape Horn. So that's all I have to do. Right, okay. So there's not too many landmarks that you have to actually reach out for. No, no. <laughs> uh, and I could even, uh, probably uh, under the rules, uh, miss... Uh, uh, Cape Lewin in West Australia. Okay. It's probably, you know, I haven't, uh, my, my approved route is Cape Lewin, uh-huh. West Australia, uh-huh. Cape of Good Hope, uh-huh. Canary Islands, and uh, Cape Horn. Cape Horn, right. And, um, South Down, where do you go? Oh, no, no, I, I'm uh, <clears throat> not too keen on going too far south at right, all. Right, right. Uh, what, what I'll do is when I, when I, uh, I'll keep more or less up in the top of the bite, yep. um, and uh, I've been across the bite three times now, mm-hmm. and um, it can get quite quite blustery mm. further south. Mm. So towards the top of the bite, and then I'll uh, try and pick the lower part of the trade winds across the Indian Ocean, mm-hmm. uh, pretty straight one, a direct line from Cape of Good Hope mm-hmm. to the Canaries and back. It, yeah, it's more or less a straight line, yep. run right or great circle route. Yeah. And um, then when I when when I pass Cape Horn, I'll try to pick up the Humboldt Current or the Peru Current. Yeah. And go north and back up into the Barmy Tropics. Right, lovely. Now, given that you've um, had some experience down in that part of the world already. Mm-hmm. Is there going to be a day where you get past where you went last time and pop the champagne corks and say, I've got past there <laughs> finally, or what? Yes, yes, well, uh, uh, I've, I've actually sailed from, from the Falklands uh, through round Cape Horn and to here and one stop mm-hmm. to, to Brisbane. So, um, you know, it, it's uh, I've actually got over that hurdle, so... Uh, it will yeah. be nice to have done it without the stop in, yeah, uh, yeah. in stop in Stanley. Yeah, fantastic. How long do you think it's going to take you? I'd like to do it in nine months, but more realistically, it's probably about ten months. Ten months, you think? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And the significance of going westbound, what challenges in particular does that throw at you? Well, uh, probably the, the, the main one is Cape Horn. Um, through various, uh, you know, problems, I've... Uh, been past Cape Horn uh, east about three times uh-huh. and it's fairly straightforward mostly the winds are westerly uh-huh. or northwesterly and it's a pretty easy ride but down there with the quite big swells and quite strong and they're not always you know, gale really really serious gales or well, gales are all right but you know uh-huh. hurricanes uh-huh. Um, the seas are still very big yeah so, so for to, our viewers, what are we talking about in terms of the size of the waves and meters? Oh, it, it starts to get uncomfortable when they're about six or eight meters. Right. Um, but as I say, they're big swells, mm-hmm. uh, and the main trouble is um, you lose the wind to a certain extent in the bottom of these swells. Mm-hmm. So heading into it is is uh, the harder part. Right. And you're that, already thrashing into it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, mm. and uh, you lose the wind, get up, it's, uh, you've got to have a bit of reduced sail, mm. and you have to rely on your autopilot, you can't steer day and night. So uh, it, that, that is the, the more difficult part, mm. is actually going west about it, it's, is a certain amount easier yeah. Yeah. going east about. Yeah. Uh, so the challenge, of course, is, is to do something which has not been done before. Right, okay. So go outside and have a look at the roof of your house and just imagine waves coming over the top of that 
and it's pretty similar to what Bill's going to be experiencing in that Southern Ocean. So probably not a very nice thought, actually. <laughs> now, um, let's talk about nutrition and diet. I'm sure lots of people are wanting to know what are you going to be eating on this trip and how much uh, do you have to stock up and, and all the rest of it. So obviously you've got to have enough food for the entire trip, but what's your daily diet consist of? Well, it's very much... Um, I'm a great fan of, of uh, rolled oats, porridge. Uh, love it, always have from... Um, yeah. I'm a child, uh, dried milk, uh, dried fruit, prunes or dates are my favourite. Right. Um, then uh, a few biscuits, morning tea, lunch, mm -hmm. um, rice is boiled rice, tin fish. Yep. And uh, you know, hopefully, I have a bit better gear this time. Uh, catching. Uh, catching yeah. fish on the way. Yeah, and right. dry, you know, dolphin fish or yep. nicer named dorados. Uh, Wahoo's little tuna, yeah. always very welcome. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm but sure. About our tin beans and um, a little bit of tin fish. Yeah. Not much else. So, do you lose a lot of weight on a trip like this? <laughs> no, unfortunately. You, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, don't don't think it's a great idea for a crash diet to go sailing around the world because that's not necessarily the case. No, no, no. So, what are the um, what are the entertainment aspects on your trip? Do you spend a lot of time reading, listening to music, uh, looking at the stars? What What are your hobbies? Well, no, I don't look out much, but uh, I'm uh, very interesting. Um, it's something people don't do, and uh, I recommend it to people who read the Bible. That's a very mm. interesting book. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, then some of the classics, um, mm -hmm. you know, Dostoevsky and Tolstoy are my favourites. I read them again and again. And, yeah. Uh, some of the uh, Mark Twain is a brilliant writer. Yeah. Uh, of course, these are on free books, and yeah. um, I've got a little bit of the uh, New York Times bestsellers. Yeah. Some of them are good, and most of them I really don't go for. Right, right. So it's nice to catch up. I say the the classics. Uh, so you don't find yourself getting bored at all? Not at all. Not no, at all. No. Mm. When I'm in port, I do tend to spend too much time on the on the web, yeah. and uh, yeah, chasing one thing and another. Yeah, right. But um, out at sea, no, I'm not bored. If I'm bored, I just go to sleep. Yeah. Um, of course, a lot of the time you you're not sleeping very well. You've got to keep a bit of an eye on things, and um, mm. you know, up at night. So when you get the chance to, to take, go to take sleep. a nap, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the interaction with wildlife on the trip? Lots of dolphins, whales, bird life? Um, no, 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 not a lot. The, the, the whales, I think, tend to um, stick by the coast. Right. And uh, you see more whales down the Australian coast than... Anywhere else. ...than you would see in the rest of the trip. Mm. Very mm. big, very big whales in... Um, around the Canary Islands, huge. I think they, I'm not sure, I think it might be blue whales, but very, very... Big, big, big whales, whales yeah. A uh, little bit of um, always albatross yeah. when you're south, which is a real nuisance. Yeah. Because I've actually hooked one, not hooked one, but mm. got uh, the line around the wing, mm -hmm. and uh, they're pretty annoyed about that mm -hmm. when you pull them in. And mm -hmm. fortunately, I have not. So you've got to pull your line in. Right. But they're, they're marvellous to look at, always. Ask yeah, beautiful. Anybody who's been at sea. Beautiful birds. They yeah. just love watching the albatross, and of course, they come in various sizes and the most beautiful of the biggest, you know, the, the wandering albatross yeah. uh, with a huge wingspan and total nonchalance. And they do, I'm sure, use you as company too. Yeah. You're, you're, they'll, they'll stay with you for hours or days mm. and um, you can see them and they use the, your boat as a bit of a reference. So, yeah, that's very pleasant. Mm. A few seals around South Africa and... Um, uh, the Falklands and the Horn and up the coast, uh, not a lot. And uh, they say the whales are, you'll see more off Moreton Bay than you will. <laughs> right, and anywhere <laughs> Now, what about human contact during this trip? Once you get out of off the coastlines of, of all the countries you're going to be passing, do you see many other boats? Are you in contact with many other boats? I saw a few um, leaving um, Australia, the first... Yachts I saw were in the North Atlantic, mm. in the Atlantic rallies. So they uh, get quite a lot of boats yeah. going across there, and uh, you see a few of the uh, races. There was a, the, the big uh, sixty-footers uh, racing to, uh, I 
think Belém. Uh, I saw a few of those, uh, but uh, no more until um, oh, a few yachts around the Falklands. But I've never saw one on on the on the sea, right? Or around Cape Horn, mm. and then the occasional ones when you get to the uh, Tahiti and the Marquesas, that sort of area. Mm. I don't go as high, quite as high as the Marquesas. Radio communication that allows you to reach how far? Oh, I've only got VHF. VHF only. Okay. So uh, you'll occasionally hear yep. hear that. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're always on sixteen mm. to listen out for ships and, mm. and have a bit of a talk if you think that they're going to you know come close to you. Yeah. Right. Usually try to say, well, look, um, don't worry about it. I can see you. Don't alter of course. Mm. And in a, well, every case so far, they said, look, we'll just go around you. Mm. And save them the trouble of. Mm. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Okay, if, if if you can see a converging course, you talk to this. But if if they're not, well, you, you don't. I don't feel like calling them up. Right. Because they could be, you know, foreign flagships, and yeah. they'll have a, uh, a radio operator. And okay, uh, well, that's uh, that's amazing. Now we all know that you're going to make it successfully around this time because we're going to send all the good positive vibes with you. Um, we'd love to have a chat with you when you got back. We get back because um, it's going to be great to hear of the journey itself and all the things that you experience. Is there any part of the journey that concerns you in particular? Um, you know, there's a movie out there at the moment about Robert Redford hitting his yacht into a sea freight container. So, is there um, things like that that concern you? No, no. Um, you know, of course, at my age, you get a little bit fatalistic about life. You've only got you know, so many years left, so if, you, if it happens to uh, fall a bit short, well, that's just how it goes. Yeah. So that's one of the advantages of being yeah. older, I guess. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. You do hear people hanging on. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> no, no, that's not a concern. I'm not concerned about, uh, you know, failure. I'd like to. Yeah. I'd like to do it. If I don't do it, that's fine. I'm enjoying doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, for anybody that's watching us today, is there any way that they can follow your journey? Are you having a blog or something online? Yes, I uh, I ran a blog last time, and uh, I did it every day. Okay, and, good. Um, it's under the, you know, you look up the uh, name of the yacht, Locomotion. Locomotion, okay. And um, you could probably put that on the screen, spell it out. It's uh, yep. sort of French for white water. Yeah. And um, it's low L, apostrophe A-U, that's water and commotion. It's a yep. similar word in France. Okay, so I'll put the I'll put the link to Bill's blog site at the end of the video so that you can actually follow his progress uh, around the world, yeah? Yeah, I enjoy it. I, I, I put a little bit of blather in when I feel like being philosophical and uh, this sort of thing. And yeah. often it's just, uh, you know, uh, a few little things that are interesting happening today. Well, I'm sure a lot of people would be interested to, to see how you're going. Have you got a Facebook page as well? No, I can't get on Facebook no. through my uh, satellite connection. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll just follow I do you on the blog. Facebook. So yeah. yeah, yeah, there's a blog there. Yeah, fantastic. And, uh, that uh, when you call it up, it shows what the weather is like now and yep. the prediction for the next seven days or so. Okay. And tells you where you are, and uh, so you can see what winds I'm expecting. And yep. Yep. I uh, write up write up the blog each day. You know, a little bit selfish in a way. <laughs> People enjoy it. Yeah. If I bit late, you know, so why haven't you written a blog today? Yeah. And uh, as I say, a little selfish in as much as if I don't write it and the boat's still travelling on, people say, oh, well, wonder why that is. We might inquire. So yeah, yeah. They might come and, uh, you know, see me. So, yeah, but every day I do it. Fantastic. Start of the fun. So there you go. Um, you're going to be able to follow this amazing gentleman as he attempts to sail around the world again. And uh, we'll be keeping pace with that. So I'll put some uh, connections in here that you'll be able to follow Bill and we'll catch up with him when he also comes back. So Bill, listen, I'd like to thank you very much for having me on board this morning and having an amazing chat with you prior to going on camera and also listening to the plans for your journey. It's been much appreciated. Oh, I'm sure everybody out there is um, inspired by this 80-year 80 80 year young gentleman who's... Um, not deciding to take things too easy and sit back on land and have a relaxing life. He's going to get out there and face the uh, the mother nature at its at its extreme levels, I'm sure, at different stages of this trip. So, Bill, it's a very inspiring journey you're about to do, and uh, we wish you all the very best with it. Oh, thanks, Matt. And That's thanks great. for joining us on Cruising Connoisseurs. 
So if you want to join our video journey, just subscribe to our YouTube channel and every time we post a video up there, you'll be alerted that there's a new video to watch. So thanks very much for tuning in today. Have a happy day wherever you are in the world and fair winds.